So I'm grateful to God for Genesis chapter 32. Follow me, verse 34, 24, 29. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, the man touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Jacob said, let me go. No, the man said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, Jacob, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying to him, well, tell me your name, I pray. And he says, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. Let the church say amen. Verse 25, 24 says, Then Jacob was left alone, and the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Today from this subject, you have to wrestle till you die. <laughs> yes, that is Dusty Rose, the greatest wrestler in the history of professional wrestling. You have to wrestle till you die. Father, thank you for this time. Amen. The story of Esau and Jacob. It's a well-documented story. It's found in the text. We just read out of chapter 32, but there are other verses that say that this particular brother, brother, twin brothers, are authentically people that once lived on this earth. It is a story that helps to explain what is known in uh, doctrinal circles as election. Election. There's something in theological circles that's called an election. It's called the election of grace. It's on the screen. Election of grace. That's where God makes choice of who will be saved and is not conditioned on anything that men do. You see that? God makes choice of who will be saved and is not conditioned on anything that men do. Election teaches that our faith and even our repentance when we get saved is not what saves us, that it is the result of the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit that draws us to God and makes us new creatures. In other words, as a person might respond to this message today, when you get up and start walking this way, the Holy Spirit is making you new. You don't have to get here and then say some magic words because God has elected you and he's drawn you by his spirit. Are y'all following me? So in the case of our featured characters, you got to see this. In other words, we can't respond to God unless God has already done something in us. No man can come unto the Father except be drawn. So that's the way salvation is. Ephesians 2, 8, it says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So it is by grace through faith that we've been saved in Christ Jesus. We did nothing ourselves. God made choice of us. He elected us. And now we are saved. Explain it if you will. Try to if you want to. It's miraculous. Now you are saved. In the case of our featured character, Jacob, here's what we find out about election. Here's what we find about God's sovereign grace. And God's sovereign grace at work in the lives of people even today. Jacob was born a twin. His twin is named Esau. It's Esau and Jacob. Esau was the firstborn. 
And here's how election works. Genesis 25, 21. Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was unable to have children. The Lord answered Isaac's prayer and Rebekah became pregnant with twins. But the two children struggled with each other in the womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening to me, she asked. And the Lord told her, the sons in your womb will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and, the, and, and your older son is going to serve your younger son. That's not the way that's supposed to work. Verse 24, and when the time came to give birth, Rebecca discovered that she did indeed have twins. The first one was very red at birth and covered with thick hair like a fur coat. So they named him Esau, meaning red. Then the other twin was born with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. So all you brothers that think you out of the woods. There's a whole lot of information in these passages that are relevant and applicable to us today. We see it in the war between the Arabs and the Israelites. It's buried in this text. Today's battle in the Middle East is Arab and Israel, the two brothers. The war between our new nature and our old nature is buried in this text. And that's a war we fight every day. The war between seeking our own will for our own lives and wanting uh, to have it our way and not allowing God's will for our life to be done is buried in this text. It's wrestling about what is it, Lord, that you would have me to do? And we don't go, not my will, but your will, but we go, no, not your will, but my will be done. And I know many of you have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, so just hold on. This message is a message about becoming what God has ordained for you to become before or from the foundation of the world. God has mapped your life out for you. All you have to do is participate. So this is a message that should make you want to wrestle until the peace you're looking for arrives. My purpose is to get you to see that we have to wrestle. I've learned that the end of every struggle after wrestling with God and the will of God for our lives, that that struggle ends with peace with God. Peace with God. Number 10 is the number of the end of struggle. And people have been struggling for an extended period of times. And it's just symbolic of the day that the struggle ends. And I want you to know that there's a day when the struggle is going to end. So I need you to hear me clearly. This can only happen, though, when we die. That is, when we die to ourselves. In the case of Esau and Jacob, God shows us how we can really relax and enjoy the journey. How many of y'all want to just relax and take the ride? There's a whole lot of stuff going on out here. You want to make sure that you're right with God. You want to make sure that your belief is the right belief. And you want to make sure that when you do die, you go to heaven. And I want to help you to relax on this journey. We need the revelation that number one, we didn't choose God. He chose us. Number two, we don't deserve to be saved, nor did we earn the right to be saved. For somebody, that went right over the top of your head. You didn't do good. You didn't stop drinking, smoking, cussing, acting the fool, or lay down the pipe and all that kind of stuff, and then God saved you. No, God made choice of you before you were in the belly of your mother. He sanctified you. He's elected you. And now here you are today with your crazy self, saved, sanctified, loving on God, Totally imperfect, but on your way to heaven. I just said a whole bunch of stuff right there. Let me prove it to you. Romans 9, 11. It's on the screen. But before they were born, that's Esau and Jacob, before they had done anything, good or bad, she received a message from God. Remember, we read it. This message shows that God chooses people according to his own purposes. 
He calls people, but not according to their good or bad works. She was told your older son will serve your younger son. Normally, the elder son is served. But in this case, the older will serve the younger. God said, I made choice of them. This ought to be good news for everybody in this room, everybody under the sound of my voice at home. God calls people. God saves people. God uses people, not according to their good or bad works. He does it just because he can. He's sovereign. He does what he wants to. When he wants to. He is God all by himself. His ways are not our ways. Neither are his thoughts our thoughts. You know, good and well, you wouldn't have saved you. You know, good and well, you wouldn't have blessed you when you did what you did. You wouldn't have rescued you when you were acting like you were acting. You know, good and well, you wouldn't have helped you when you were being you. But God. Now, my message today is about the process that you have to go through to become what it is that the Lord has ordained you or purpose you to be. It's about wrestling with God to know his will and then to eventually be in a position where you can do his will. God has to process you. God has to mature you. God has to work you. God has to, to develop you. There's some things you know have got to die in you before God can fully use you. So, Jacob, Jacob is the man to teach us about these things today. I love Jacob. The word of God reveals he has struggles. He has struggles with himself, within himself, and he has struggles with God. So we struggle from the womb to the tomb. One thing I've learned from his life, I learned this a long time ago, is that when we get a little confused about what God is doing in our lives, when we become impatient, and we wind up taking matters into our own hands, trying to help God bring our prophesied destinies to pass in our timing. Even then when we blow it in the process and don't cooperate, my word to you today is simply this. If you are his, rest assured, he's still with you. Amen. With your crazy self. If you've ever tried to take matters into your own hand and tried to get there a little quicker than what you think God was moving in your life and you blew it. If you're in a condition in a situation right now and you are his and you made a bonehead mistake, you did something so stupid and you're paying for it right now. You still need to know God is with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you, and he may be cramping your style right now. He may be irritating you right now. The fact that you know he's with you may be the problem that you got right now because he's waiting on you just to correct, just to get it right, just to get it straight, just to realize that he's still with you. I wish the people of God would just never forget the fact that God is still with you. And if we'll know that God is still with us, then when our brother falls, our sister falls, somebody goes through something in life, we'll be able to properly able to restore them. Because if God is still with you, with your crazy self, then you know that God is still with them. God is still with them. And so many of us have had this, this thing that we do. We hear about somebody messing up and we think that God don't love them no more, that God's mad at them anymore. If God's going to be mad at anybody, it'd be you. <laughs> there are few people recorded in the scriptures that were guilty of not being patient. They couldn't wait on God and what God had promised them, Adam and Eve. God had given them dominion over everything, told them they're going to have it, and they wanted to be like God. They ate. They died. Spiritually died. Abraham and Sarah. God said, I'm going to give you a seed. Sarah and Abraham say, well, you ain't moving fast enough. And here comes Hagar. The prodigal son says, I want mine. I want what's, what's mine now. And wound up in a hog pen. For us today, there's this man by the name of Jacob. Everybody and their mama know Jacob. If you've ever went to Sunday school, you know about Jacob. His name means trickster, conniving, manipulator, supplanter, heel grabber. He's wrestling with his brother, the Bible says, in the womb of his mama. 
and trying to become the first one to be born, trying to do his own thing. And God had prophesied that he was going to be served by his elder brother, but he wanted to help out. When Esau comes out, the boy got his hand around his foot, got his hand on his ankles, holding on. Well, he showed you that they were fighting in the womb about who's going to be first. He's trying to get for himself what has already been promised him by God. He's trying to obtain what God has for him in his own power. God has already said, this is what you're going to be. You'll be Israel one day. But he is trying to get it himself. Romans 9, 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And for so many of y'all, you might remember I told you in the past that the word used for hated there is not hate in the sense of dislike or despise. The word is from the Greek word missio, meaning to love less, as in making comparison. I have more that I want to do with this one than I want to do with that one. And you got to believe that God does that, right? He's no respect of person, but God chooses people. And some he gives many, some he gives a few, some he gives five, some he gives two, some he gives one. And that's what it is here. At the track me yesterday, I heard some coaches there recruiting some athletes. And they are uh, uh, seeing these athletes compete with one another and they're running in the same race. But I heard one coach say, I like her. And there was something about her uh, compared to the others in the race. That one stood out. And some kind of way God is saying about Jacob, he stands out with his crazy self. There's something that God sees in each and every one of us that causes him to map out our existence for us, to direct our paths for us. But we will never arrive, nor will we become what the Lord has purposed us to be and Less we're willing to wrestle till we die. Amen. Jacob has all kinds of issues. And yes, he's strategic and will be strategic to the plan of God. Out of him shall come uh, many, many nations. In other words, Jacob has issues. God knows what they are. And it doesn't prevent God from using him. I need some people in here that kind of feel a little Jacobish right now and, and realize that that's the way God works. Jacob is like a whole lot of us. He has purpose and problems. He is destined and devious at the same time. He is both chosen and corrupt. You got to see it. God's ultimate plan is that Jacob breaks free from the shackles of his lower nature and limitations. Let me help somebody in the back who, who, who thought you had to do something and be something before God calls you to do something and to be something. What we call wonderful, they're wonderful. And what God calls wonderful are miles apart. God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He takes that which is nothing to bring to nothing that which is. You are a perfect candidate for God with your crazy self. It doesn't take all that. The Bible is replete with examples of people who came from nowhere and had nothing. And God still used them mightily. They were obs obscure, dysfunctional people that God would raise up. And, and here they are, years later, we're talking about them. I'm going to name some of these people. Old lying, idol-worshiping Abraham. We've already mentioned him. Abraham was lying and, 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 and a pagan idol-worshiper with his daddy. That little shepherd boy had a dysfunctional household. Sibling rivalry everywhere. The little boy David, just a little cute little ruddy little fella, just wasn't even accepted by his daddy. I mean, they, they came to anoint a king and they didn't even invite him to the coronation service, to the consecration. And he's the one God had chosen and God consecrated him. What about that lying prostitute? Uh, her name Rahab. You know, Save the people of God with her lying on self. There's a prostitute. That's just to name a few people, right? God is awesome. He will even publicly allow people to see you do some stuff that does not represent him at all. And then he'll turn around and use you to bless them same people. Come on, y'all. That saw you do your stuff. 
Good God Almighty. That's just the way he is. So the Lord had made choice of Jacob. He has a plan mapped out for his life. But Jacob puts his hand on it. And Jacob tries to influence the outcome by human means. And there are people wrestling right now trying to influence the outcome of the call on their life and the destiny in their life and the purpose in their life. And they're using human means. They're looking in all the wrong places and all the wrong faces. This thing is relational. This thing is about just being at peace and at one meant with God to be in atoned and being careful that you just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and allow God to add all of these things that the heathen seek after unto you. So how many times have we been in a place where we couldn't figure it out so we tried to work it out? I'm talking to somebody. I'm not trying to get through this. I'm trying to help you. This is therapeutic. You've been in that place where you couldn't figure it out so you tried to work, work it out. You couldn't waste weight on God. Them that wait on God just shall renew their strength. But you didn't want to hear that verse. Wait on the Lord and the Lord will strengthen your heart. But you don't want to hear that verse. You don't know it. We mastered everything but waiting. Can't you just hold on just a little while longer? Can't you endure hardness as a good soldier? Can't you just handle the stress and the strain and the pain and just hold on and wait till your change come? All the point of days of my life, Joe said, I'm just going to wait till my, after I've been tried in the fire. I tell come, y'all don't like the fire. People don't like the fire. The fire is not there to burn you up. The fire is there to purge the things off of you that you need off of you so that you can become what it is that God has to take you through. Tribulations and tests and trials, they come to make you better, not bitter. They come so that you can be whole when it's over. Pure, sanctified, meat for the master's use. Tell somebody, God working on me. He working on me right now. So Jacob also presents for us today, watch this, he pres this is what Jacob, listen, this is Jacob. He presents and represents for us today what or who we used to be. Listen, Jacob, this is the punchline, eventually eventually became Israel. No, you don't get it. Here's what you need to get and never forget this. Jacob and Israel are the same person. You see it? Just like we have two natures Jacob is the old nature. Israel is the new nature. The process of Jacob becoming Israel is what I want to focus on in the time I have left. The Israel side of Jacob represents for us what God purposes for us to become. It represents our shall be. We don't know what we shall be, but we are becoming. It's our shall be. The Jacob side of Israel represents what God has to work with in the process of becoming Israel. Israel is what Jacob will become. It's a type of what God is doing in our life, what we shall be. What we are now is what he's got to work with. Think about it. All your idiosyncrasies, all your shortcomings, all your weirdness, all of your, all of your stuff. God has that. He's the potter. And we're the clay. And we're marred clay in the hands of the potter. The potter is doing a work. He has us on the wheel trying to get us to do his will. And, and some of us, if you resist, you stay longer on the wheel. And some of us, he has to take off the wheel and start working on somebody else because you're so hard-headed. But you're still in the house and it's in the mind of the part of what he's going to eventually do with you. So don't panic and think that it's a waste and that it's over because the potter has a purpose for every bit of clay that he lets into the house. Y'all not helping me here. And if you're in the potter's house, you don't have to worry about it because you're in the house what you want to be is on the wheel in his wheel and in his hand 
come on y'all the good hand of the Lord the Bible says is upon me you want the good hand of the Lord on your life you want God's hand you want to feel the presence of God you want God's hand you don't want to just be in the house you want to be in his hand you don't want to just be around us you want to be one of us you want to be used by God let him work on you The Israel side of Jacob represents what we shall be. Mm. Let me show you some Jacobs, though, that are in the house illegally. It's the Jacob in some people that takes matters into their own hands trying to become something. It's the Jacob in some of us that may be faking and trying to get folk to believe that there's more to us than we can see, than people can see. Yeah, Jacob can fake it. Remember, Jacob takes it into his own hand. Jacob works. Jacob, Jacob want to be seen. Jacob, Jacob wants a pat on the back. Jacob, Jacob wants the Jacob part of us. The Jacob part of us wants to be acknowledged and have the chief seats. The, the, the Jacob part of us wants the license right now. They want, they want ordination right now. They, they, they want people to know who they are right now. You cannot allow people to know your end before you get there. You can't do that. Don't, if God spoke to you and said you're going to be an apostle, don't tell people you're an apostle right now until you can prove apostleship in your life. you got to prove to people. You can't tell people you're a servant and you're standing there with your finger in your mouth where people are working and doing what they got to do. you got to not tell me this Missouri. you got to show me. you got to show people what it is. got to let it happen in your life. Let it happen. Become that first Jacob is never satisfied with God's way of doing things to get him where he's going. That's what Jacob represents. Uh, I'm on my grab, heel grab, supplanter, trickster. I'm going to get mine. He hooked up with his lying mama. I mean, his conniving mama. He got it honestly. His uncle was conniving. Laban, it was in the family. It's just, it was just in his family. And, and, and they just connived and, and did things their way to, to get done. The scary part about Jacob, and it's in the text, is that he's gifted. He's gifted as all get out. He's talented, but he has no character. His name betrays him. He's a conniving, trickster, manipulator, heel grabber, supplanter. That's who he is. He's talented, though. He's gifted, but he has no character. Remember this. Now, y'all got to get this. Esau came home tired from hunting. This man tricked his brother out of his birthright. He got game. He saw what was going on. He looked at that thing. Boy, go, boy, got game. And he said, I, I got him now. I can get this birthright for real. I tried to get it in the womb. He didn't get it. I'm going to try. But God prophesied. God spoke it. You're going to become that, Jacob. Just hold on. But Jacob, um, Jacob said, I want it, and I want it now. So he comes home. His daddy, Isaac, loved Esau because he'd always bring him home some good venison. Some good deer meat. I don't know who that is giving that deer meat to my daughter. She cooking it up, though. And, and, and they eating it. I ain't had none of it. Don't want none of it. But, but Isaac, oh, he loved that deer meat, that venison. So Jacob, as talented as he was, he was cooking some stew. Boom, boy, cook, cook. He's talented. Around his mama, maybe on the curse there, he learned how to cook. So he cooking that good stew, kind of stew that Esau liked, and they all liked. So listen to what happened, Genesis 25, 29. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness, exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied. But trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? Man, I'm so hungry, you can have the birthright. But Jacob said, first you must swear that your birthright's cold is mine. So Esau swore an oath, thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn 
to his brother Jacob. He tricked him. That boy slick. He's an opportunist. He couldn't wait on God. God said that the older would serve the younger, but his brother couldn't wait. So he takes matters into his own hands. I can't believe you can hear the repetition of taking matters into your own hands. I'm trying to get some people to realize, and I'm a living witness of what God can do if you leave it in his hands. If you take matters into your own hands, you're not going to get very far. Your plans are not going to take you to where you got to go. Only the plans of God will materialize in our lives for an eternal purpose. So you got to let go and let go. But no, Jacob wants to practice religion. That's what religion is. When you do things your way instead of God's way. Amen. Religious people sitting in here right now. Just mean, ornery, just doing things your way. Disconnected. Just not a part of the whole pure religion and undefiled. It's spelled out in the text. But they're just people that are working themselves to the bone and doing it their way. And people can see that. People, people ain't crazy. People ain't crazy. It's religion. You're doing things your way. And not. when we have a set order, we have rules, we have things that we do, ministries in place, and you don't want to be a part. You want to do your own thing. You want credit for it. You don't want to be one in the number. And that's not in this church. That's in all them churches that are watching me right now at home. That's for all these other pastors and leaders. Now, you got to remember, when I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to people around the world. So some people might think, well, what's going on? What, what, what is he talking about? This church, we're doing good. We, can't, we cannot be doing the thing that we're doing if we didn't have the kind of people in place that are committed and sold out to the things of God that make this thing happen without stress, strain, or worry. But I pastor other pastors, and I pastor other ministries, and I oversee other ministries. And there are people watching us now from Australia, from Africa, South America, and places right now. And they're getting this, and they're going, that's Sally, that's Jimmy. Yeah, Bob, hear that, Bob, hear that. They're, they're, they're getting this thing. And you don't have to say amen when it ain't in reference to you. But if you know it's true, you ought to say amen. So then Jacob is gifted. He even goes down to his uncle Laban's house. He's so talented that the Bible says that when he got there, Laban's crops increased and increased and increased. And this brother was able to expand the farm. He just took over. Ooh, Laban was so happy, he gave him one of his daughters. He said, man, you can have daughter. He wanted Rachel. Oh, pretty Rachel. Oh, but boy, when he woke up that next morning, they done slipped Leah in that bed with him. And Leah's name means old droopy-eyed. <laughs> Ugly Leah. And he wanted Rachel. And again, his, his, it's in his family, right? His uncle made him work 14 years. Had to work another seven years in order to get Rachel. But he's so talented, he took the farm to a whole nother level. So here's something the body of Christ has got to recognize. And I hear God, and I'm going to try to close this. We got to stop mistaking talent for the anointing. I know a whole lot of pastors who have mis mistaken the ability to grow a church or a ministry and to attract people with being called of God and having God's approval. They're people that we know are crooks. We see them. We see them on YouTube. We see them on the television. They're drawing crowds of people. And you listen to their message for just two minutes. And you say to yourself, how are these people following that? That is not God. There are people who have gifts. There are people who are talented enough, who are magnetic enough in the natural to draw crowds and to bring people together. The, the people who, who, who don't have God's approval, approval or don't have God's anointing on their lives because we can see it clearly. Spiritual gifts are not even a sign of God's approval in the text. The Corinthian church was full of spiritual gifts, but God says, you know, I got a problem with you. You, you, you. You're not spiritual. You're carnal. You're walking in the flesh. You're swinging off the chandeliers and speaking in tongues, but you ain't got no love. You, you're not demonstrating uh, what God has purposed us to ultimately be and that's to be lovers of God and men so I've been teaching on the qualifications of being a spiritual leader from first Timothy chapter 3 and in those passages we find only one gift mentioned for a leader minister elder pastor overseer to be placed in the office of bishop and pastor and elder and overseer and it's simply the gift of teaching Every other qualification is about character. Only one gift. We have to be apt to teach. All the other stuff are matters of the heart. 
a person's heart for God and for people. But God's given us pastors, according to our own heart, who will feed us with knowledge and understanding. Feeding the sheep is what an under-shepherd does. We are to feed the flock of God, taking the oversight, not for filthy lucre, but we ought to do it willingly. And so that's the one gift, apt to teach, being able to teach. Remember, Jacob and Israel, remember, are the same person. So I guess we can say that Jacob may be gifted, but it's Israel that has the anointing. Well, some of y'all, you waiting on your shout. You waiting on me to talk about you. You waiting on me to lift you up instead of you lifting the Lord up. I see in the church today, the church is transitioning from Jacob to Israel. Uh, the pressures of life, the things that are going on in the world are causing us to put, take our hands off of the move of God and allow God to move in our midst. I believe that right now we're transitioning from works and stuff and talent and gifts and we're moving into the anointing because it's going to take the anointing to destroy these yokes. When the people come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west to the house of God, it's going to take the power of God. And we're moving from powerlessness to powerfulness. It doesn't matter what it looks like because our faith is being put to the test. There are people that are dying that have never died before. There are people that are sick and afflicted. And we're breathing our breasts and we're praying and we're fasting and we're seeking God because the enemy is after our faith. Will the Son of Man find faith on the earth when he returns? The enemy wants us to doubt that God is able in these lands day but the devil is a liar I'm like the Hebrew boys whether he delivers us or not we know that he is able we're not going to change our idea about who God is and what God is capable of doing I serve a mighty God I serve an unlimited God I serve a God that can do anything but fail I serve a God that left out of heaven came to earth on my behalf died for me and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture seated on the right hand of the father and I serve a God who who's living right now making intercession for me. I serve a God that's got my back, front, and my side that will never leave me nor forsake me. So no matter what you say, what you do, devil, how you act, what you present, it don't matter. For the Lord I live and the Lord I die. I serve a God that has convinced me to be after from this body is to be present from the Lord. And though you slay me, yet will I trust him. I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. Until I die. Somebody throw your head back and shout in here. I believe that God is calling us to flow in the anointing and no longer trust the talents of the flesh. Our churches today need to make a distinction between gifts and the anointing. The anointing is God working through a person to produce life in the lives that they touch. The anointing produces life. The anointing is what we should be walking in every day. The anointing is what flows through us when we're not doing what we're paid to do. The, the anointing is 24-7. The anointing is for your job. The anointing is for your neighbors. The anointing is for your co-workers. The anointing is for your children. The anointing is what you walk in every day. Acts 10 38 explains what the anointing is for. Jesus models it for us. How that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He went about doing good, driven, led by the anointing of God. When you're anointed, people are just blessed being in the room with you. When you're anointed, you stick out like a sore thumb. When you're anointed, folks just want to chum up to you and don't know why. When you're anointed, people want to bring your stuff and don't know why. When you're anointed, people speak well of you and don't even know why. When you're anointed, there's a difference between you and everybody that's unanointed. When you're anointed, the atmosphere changes when you come into the room. When you're anointed, the atmosphere changes in your house when you anointed the atmosphere changes wherever you go when you anointed the atmosphere shifts in Publix the atmosphere shifts in Winn Dixie the atmosphere shifts in Walgreens it don't matter where you are when you anointed you may quicken to help somebody not to be seen spiritual but to help somebody he went about doing good the anointing does them the anointing will make you a dream maker for the people that are around you your anointing will cause you to do good. When you're anointed, it makes you attractive. It makes you attractive. It will attract, though, some people that some folk uh, would not think the anointing attracts, but the anointing will attract sinners. 
<laughs> the anointing on your life will, will attract uh, uh, women with issues, men with issues lepers as Jesus like the woman with an issue of blood Jesus was anointed was going about doing good and she heard that he was passing by and she said within herself if I can but touch the hem of his garment I believe I can be made whole it's the anointing that attracted her to Jesus and she made her way through the crowd and didn't touch him she touched something that was touching him the anointing all flows down from the head down to the skirts of the garment right down to the end of the garment Jesus was so in tune with his father he was saturated in the anointing and it was the anointing in the tassel of his garment that healed this woman from all her disease. David was in that cave and the people came broke, discontented distressed because of the anointing. The anointing makes the difference in our lives. The anointing on Jesus attracted folk that needed healing. Them that are whole don't need a physician but them that are sick. The anointing will attract folk uh, who need a place to stay and some of y'all with the big houses with the empty rooms if you're anointed it's going to attract some people that may need what God has blessed you with. Uh -huh. The anointing will attract folk who need a job. I'm going to back up and say that again because some of y'all, you're living too large with little people. You got driving the big truck but you won't put nothing in it. Some of y'all got the big cars, two or three in the garage and watching your brother and sister walk to service every week and try to catch a bus to work when you can pull out one of them cars and throw them the keys and say the Lord be with you. Folk who need somebody to lift them up that's who they draw. Speak loud life into. That's what the anointing draw. There's some anointing on our lives that are not for us. It's for somebody else. God didn't anoint you for you to be famous, to be popular, to be apostle and a bishop. He appointed you and anointed you and called you to be used by him to whoever your anointing attracts. When you're anointed, people can see what having God's DNA, his anointing, has produced in your life. So with all of this sin, good God Almighty, we can see that Jacob may just be gifted, but it's Israel that carries the anointing. Why, Bishop, is this so significant? Why, Brother Vaughn, is this so significant? Why, Papa, is this so significant? Why, Popcorn, is this so significant? Gifts, talents, they often point people to the person when the person is talented all you do is talk about how talented that person is I'm preaching gifts have a way of highlighting the flesh yeah. talents the flesh y'all ain't kidding this character and the anointing always points people to the one who gave the anointing to God himself the effect of the anointing will always get God some glory every time Jesus healed anybody blessed anybody raised up anybody they wound up glorifying God and the Bible said they went to praising and dancing and magnifying God when it's the anointing you'll give God the glory when it's the anointing you'll praise God for it when it's the anointing you will celebrate <laughs> Jacob's all of my Jacob's in here y'all still some of y'all struggling you're wrestling. You're going to wrestle till you die. <laughs> Jacob's in here. Jacob's. Jacob, you can learn to speak. But you need to be anointed to preach. Yeah. Jacob, you can learn to sing. But it's the anointing that destroys the yokes. <laughs> People can learn to play an instrument. But it's the anointing that can drive away evil spirits and give peace to the believers. David was an anointed minstrel. And when he played, them demons would leave King Saul. The psalm, psalmists, songsters, singers. There needs to be an anointing on your life. Yeah, you can sing in key, but you need to sing in the key of life. You need to be life givers. The anointing destroyed the yoke. Remember, this passage is about those who may feel like 
there's something that they need to become. They're just not there yet. And they may be trying to get there on their own. I'm talking to people who are in some kind of process. There's always the process of time and the process of affliction where God is working on us. God at work to help us to have the change that we need to have in our life. God saved us and set us free so that we could be free indeed. And there are a whole lot of Israels that just got too much Jacob. Too much Jacob going on. There's too many uh, saints that got too much flesh going on. We cannot get to where we're going if we stay Jacob. We'll never manifest completely and fully if we stay in the flesh. Jacob was chosen by God to become Israel. So here's what Jacob is. Here's what Israel is. Israel is the next level Jacob. Y'all didn't get that. Israel is the same person new. You still didn't get that. You still look like you look. You still dress like you said. You still live like you live. You still work where you work. You still married to who you married to. You still got the same group of friends. But Israel is Jacob new. Come on. It's the next level. Jacob. And somebody here, you know God's trying to take you and us to the next level. My wife said yesterday, it's next level time. God's shifting all over the ministry. God's shifting all over the body of Christ. God's shifting in the kingdom. He's trying to get us to the next level. It's time for us to level up. It's time for us to come up. He's taking us to another level. The same person knew. I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Now they look the same. When people see you, you look like the same person approaching them. But after they engage you because of the anointing on your life, they can see that you are new. You're the same person, but you're different. You don't drink as much. You don't smoke as much. You don't cuss asthma matter of fact for some of us we don't drink smoke or cuss at all anymore and people can see couldn't nobody do that but God God is still working on some of us because Jacob is still rising up but we can take Jacob and we can wrestle with God uh, until we become so what's the purpose of this message put it on the screen I don't want anyone to die before they reach Israel status I'm just telling you right now, I don't want any one of you to die before you reach Israel status. Now, Jacob will always be a part of you. Sit down one last time. Jacob will always, you will wrestle with Jacob until you leave this planet. You will wrestle with your lower nature until you leave this planet. But if we follow the process till the end, we'll discover that in the end, simply this. Jacob will discover is Israel with a limp. Not perfect, but no longer the same. When the angel or when God touched the hollow of his thigh and knocked his leg out, it gave him a limp. Now, when his brother was coming towards him, he sent gifts after gifts, caravan after caravan, thinking that that would, that would satisfy the brother. Maybe he wouldn't, he wouldn't get vengeance and, and pay him back. But there was one thing that Esau could not deny. If this boy was blessed as the firstborn and he had the rights, then he knew that could no man maim him or hurt him. That if he was maimed or hurt, it was God that had to do it. So when Esau saw him coming, he saw the limp. And he said, that boy done been with God. And who am I to fight against God? They were reconciled. But let me show it to you in the text. Nobody's going to be perfect after you become Israel because Jacob and Israel are the same person. In Genesis 32, Jacob becomes Israel. He's heading home, as I just told you. Esau is hot. He's about to reap what he's sown. Esau going to take him out. Jacob said, I'm going to not let go, God. I'm going to stay right here until you bless me. I'm going to send these other folk. Let me read it to you. Verse 24. This left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, <laughs> he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of socket. So my brothers and my sisters, here's my message to you. Good God Almighty. They wrestled, the Bible said, to the breaking of dawn. It was a long fight. Anybody here 
under the sound of my voice, listen to me at home. You've been wrestling with the Lord about some things for a long time. For a long time. Now I'm going to have to slow this thing down. I'm going to have to put this on 33 and take it off 45. Been such a long time since I saw you. You got to slow this thing down. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Come on, anybody here been wrestling with somebody for a long time? Been wrestling with something for something you can't even tell nobody about. It's just your own little pet wrestling match. Yeah, you just wrestle, lay in the bed and wrestle, get in the car and wrestle, drive around wrestling, look at your phone wrestling. You you wrestle with that thing for a long time. I'm preaching, Benny. Y'all looking at me. I'm I'm coming. It's all right, dude. It's all right. You're wrestling. Is this the one or should I look for another? You wrestling. You about to make up. You about to get married. You got to. You got to wrestle. You got to say, "Hey, wait a minute. I got to." There's a wrestling in all of us. There's some things we have to contemplate before we bust another move. How many of y'all are wrestling with some thoughts and wrestling with some ideas and some concepts about God? How many of you right now are wrestling with your faith and trying to say, "God, you got to be real," because the world out here is going to hell in a handbasket. This God, you gotta. You gotta be real because the government is screwed up the laws are screwed up people are screwed up this there's, there's things happening out here god i need to know that you're really anybody here wrestling with christianity and wrestling with the word of god and looking at all these posts and all these things people that seemingly are sane and clothing in their right mind are falling for the tricks of the devil and are repeating garbage and saying things that are tripping people up people are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine by the sly of men who lie in wait who have cunning crafty devices that are devised to deceive them and to pull them away from the things of God. I am one of these people on this planet as saved as I believe I am and as much word as I have I'm saved by hope. I hope the Lord is coming. I hope this thing is going to turn out right. I hope I'm going to be with him forever. I hope. Man come on y'all we're saved by hope and that ought to help somebody else because you don't have to see it because if hope is seen then why do you yet hope for it? Man we walk by faith and not by sight. We got to accept some things and say God I'm with you I'm going to be with you till the end and I'll find out when it's all over whether it was true or not but I promise you I'm going to cover my bases I'm not going to be one of them that should have and could have and didn't have I'm going to cover my base and if it ain't good then so be it but if it is I'll be happy 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 for the rest of my life somebody shout in here and give God some praise somebody here you're wrestling about you you're wrestling about a change in your life. You're wrestling about next level. Uh, Israel is next level, Jacob. You're wrestling about what God has in store for you. Here's what Jacob said, verse 26. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And I got a revelation here in closing. This is it. Here it is in the context of being blessed and in this wrestling match he was basically saying to him the word blessed there entails a pronouncement and not just any type of announcement or pronouncement or enunciation but it is a pronounced blessing that is in essence a benediction what he is saying is I'm going to wrestle I ain't going to let you go until you pronounce the benediction over Jacob. Jacob is saying, I'm tired of being a trickster. I'm tired of being known as a liar. I'm tired of being known as a heel grabber. I'm tired of being known as a supplanter. I'm tired of being known as a crook. Since I've been wrestling with you all night, I've seen myself. You've already shown me that I'm my own worst enemy. That is not an enemy out there. There's an enemy in me in here. And I'm willing to give it all up. And I'm not going to let you go until you pronounce the benediction over my life. Lord, give the benediction over my old self. God, give the benediction over my own ways. God, give the benediction over my own thoughts. God, I was a heel grabber and a supplanter and a crook. But God, I need you to pronounce me as dead. Lord, I need you to save Jacob is over and Israel now lives. Jacob said, I'm a 
gonna wrestle you until I die. What do you mean die? Did God kill him? No. No, no, no. Did God kill Adam and Eve? No. No, no, no. But Jacob died to himself. Jacob died so that Israel could live. And in order for us to move from the flesh to the spirit, from uh, from talent to anointing, we've got to die to ourselves. We've got to lay our lives down. Jacob said, I'm going to wrestle till I die. Till I die to myself. Till I die to my old ways. Till I die to taking matters into my own hands. Till I die to manipulating people, stuffing things. God, I'm going to wrestle with you till I die to my flesh, till I, I die to my attitude, my bad attitude, till I die to my lust, till I die to these things. God, I'm going to wrestle with you till I die to my old slick ways, till I die, God, to being a poor money manager, till I die. God, I'm going to just stay right here, God. I'm going to hold on until you bless me. I'm going to grab a hold of the horns of the altar. I'm not going to let go, God, till you bless me. I'm going to pray when I don't feel like praying. I'm going to talk to you when I don't feel like talking to you. God, I know you're never leave me nor forsake me so since you're here listen up god i need the oh i need the uh, every hour lord uh, i need you pass me not uh, oh blessed savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art called uh, do not pass me by god i want to wait on the lord uh, i want to be strong uh, i want the process to continue break me mold me bend me do whatever you gotta do to me take it away from me take it away from me take him away from me take it away from me god whatever you gotta do i want to become israel i want to be a prince with god i want to be victorious with god and man in other words you might wrestle till you die but i promise you even on this side of heaven you can wrestle and win good god almighty you can wrestle and win somebody's got to have a hand lifted somebody's got to be the victor somebody's got to overcome and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith if you got faith the grain of a mustard seed you can say to mountains be not removed cast into the sea and not doubt mountains will have to get out of your way i need about 10 of y'all that's kind of got your arms folded kind of kind of tired been sitting there a little chilly and you just kind of like taking it or leave it i did not come here to perform for you today i came here to move you from flesh to spirit from jacob to israel from talent to anointing i came to tell you that God sees you. He knows where you are. And if you'll take your hands off of it, he can take you to where you gotta go. If you'll just let it go. Somebody say let it go. Let it go. If you just let it go, God can feel you. In order to get what's coming, you gotta let go of what you got. In order to become Israel, you got to die to Jacob. Somebody say die Jacob. Die Jacob. I'm gonna wrestle till I die. Throw your head back. Reach way down. Shout in here! We got to wrestle till we die with what's keeping us back. And you know what it is. You know what you need God to take. And I'm going to give somebody an opportunity to run to an altar. I'm going to give somebody an opportunity to say, God, this is what's been keeping me. I'm going to get rid of it right now. I'm going to wrestle with you. I'm going to die to this today. Take it. Take it. And matter of fact, you need to know this. He's already taken it. He wants you to lay aside every weight and their sin that so easily besets you. Why? So you can run with race the, the patience, the race that is set before you. You know what you got to get rid of. You know who you got to get rid of. You know what that thing that's holding you back. You know what's holding you down. You know what's keeping you from ultimately becoming. You know what's keeping you from becoming Israel. Come on, Jacob. Wrestle. Come on, Jacob. Wrestle. Come on, Jacob. Wrestle. Become. Lay it aside. Put it off. Anger, wrath, malice, division, derision. Lay it off. Flesh. Lay it off. Lust. Lay it off. Him, her, it, that. Lay it off. Put it off. Get on 
the altar. Put it on. Put it on. Hallelujah. Come on. Put it on. Father, take away the fear. Father, take away the pain. Father, take away the sorrow. Father, lift my head. Father, lift my head. Father, lift my head. Father, let me have hope again. God, let me have faith again. God, let me believe again. Put the fire back in me. Put the fire back in me. God, I need your fire. God, I need your fire. I need the anointing. I need the anointing. God, I'm not going to let go till you bless me. I need the anointing. Pronounce the benediction over my own self, over my own ways, God, today. God, I made some mistakes. I've done some things, God. I've been some places, God. I've seen some things, God. It's keeping me from becoming God. God, I lay it aside right now. I put it off right now. I ain't gonna let go till you bless. You gotta open your mouth. This ain't a time for you to be sitting there. This is the time for you to be saying, God, I need you. God, do it for me. If you don't do nothing but glorify him, if you do nothing but praise him, if you don't do nothing but give him thanks, just tell him something. Tell him why you're here. Tell him what you came down for. And then believe that he'll pronounce a benediction. Ah, uh, but don't leave him until he does. Believe that he'll pronounce a benediction. Believe that he'll do it. You've gotten into flesh and gossip. You've gotten into cliques and factions. Get go and let God. Tell God I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. I want your will to be done. I don't want to manipulate this. I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Have your way. Whatever you want from me, I'll take it. Whatever you want to do with me, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. And God, I thank you. I thank you for your mighty acts and your wonderful works toward the children of men. And God, as pastor and shepherd of this flock, I stand in the gap for those, God, who didn't have the courage, the strength, even the understanding to know that this could be the day of their breakthrough, that it could be the moment that they've been waiting for, that now they can continue the process of becoming Israel by stepping up another level. Somebody today, God, needs to know that you're calling them to another level. They won't be complete overnight because Jacob and Israel are the same person. They will continue to wrestle with Jacob. But Jacob teaches us we can wrestle and win. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for change today. We, by faith, believe, God, that we've gone to another level. And, God, not only do we want to profess it, but we want to manifest it. We want to demonstrate it. We're going to demonstrate total dependency upon you. We want to demonstrate peace in the midst of a storm. We want to demonstrate calm when there's chaos. God, we want to prove to the world that we've been with you in our deeds, in our works, in our commitment to our local church, our local ministries. God, we want to prove that we love you by loving people. We don't want to love you and not love our brother who we see every day. Take us to another level. Help us to become the Christian that the world is looking for. The earth is in travail, groaning for the manifestation of the children of God. The world has been waiting for you to reveal who your children are. And Father, let us know that there's 7,000 more. There's a perfect, complete number of people, a remnant, that haven't bowed their knee to bail. Help us never to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Help us to always condescend to men of low estate. Help us, Lord, to esteem others better than ourselves. Help us walk in the power that you give. Help us walk in the glory and sense the presence, the kabod, the weight of God on our lives 24-7. Help us to know that the glory is for people to be delivered and people to be healed and people to be saved and people to be enriched and increased. 
Thank you, God, that the anointing makes us dream makers. The anointing attracts sinners, wine bibbers, prostitutes, folk that are lost, people that are bound, lepers, people that are outcast, people that are disenfranchised. God, we thank you that we know that the anointing is not for us only. Help us to transition from talent, from gifts, being gifted and talented, to being anointed. Help us not to try to practice what we do and do it and learn it. But God, we open up ourselves right now for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our lives. We pray on this altar. We grab a hold of the horns of the altar. We believe in God that you set us up today. That this whole message was a setup. Those that are watching at home, God, that it was a setup. That today is the day that they get delivered, God. Today is the day that they satisfied, that they realized that that they that itch that they had was just a meeting to die to themselves, that they are able to satisfy that itch today. Scratch them, God, where they itch. Touch them where they need to be touched. Touch the hollow of their thigh, the strongest muscle in the body. Touch it, God. Touch it, knock it out of whack, and let people see their limp. Let people know that they've been with you. Let these people walk out here today and people that are watching online go on with their lives today. And somebody can bump into them and realize that a change is taking place. That they've been with you. I thank you for the Potter's House International Ministries. Continue to mold it and to make it and raise up, God, those that you want to raise up to fill these gaps in these last days. Lord God, those that you are developing to become Israel's, the anointed. Thank you. Fill me up. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Feel me, feel me up. Till I overflow, don't leave this altar yet. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Feel me. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up till I overflow. This is baby. Fill me up Till I overflow I wanna run over I wanna run I wanna run over Fill me up Till I overflow I wanna run over Listen we get ready to go. Let's keep singing this. Feel me up, God. God, feel me up, God. Come on. Feel me up, God. Come on, Carol. Feel me up. Feel me up. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, feel me up, feel feel me up, God, feel me up, God, feel me up, 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 feel me up,
to everybody that came to this altar today whether you understand it or not God met you here Gerald fill me up till I overflow on this altar it's a setup I saw it not everybody but individually there's some people this is a sign that you're hungry right that not there's something wrong with you something wrong with all of us but this is a sign that you want to go higher this is next level this is your introduction to the next level this is where the process continues now be honest with me, how many of you have not been feeling this process a little bit? The process has been kind of hard. Anybody? Process has been kind of rough. You like saying, God, when? How long? You know, a lot of things that we ask God to do, and here's what Jesus says, I've already done it. I've already spoiled principalities and powers, made sure of them openly out on the cross. I'm not taking nothing else from you. You got to lay it aside. Sometimes it's wrong to pray, God, take this from me and take that from me. He said, I did. I did it on the cross. Now what you have to do according to Hebrews is lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you so that you can run unhindered this race that is set before you. It's your job now. You've got power over all the power of the wicked one. You've got power and authority over all the power and authority of the devil. You can tread on serpents, cast out devils. You've got power and God has given you power. I want everybody to lift your hands. Everybody around the building, we get ready to get out of here. Fill me up, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over, I need him run over, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run Father, as we bring this worship experience to a close today, but not the process, I'm praying, Lord God, that you would continue to work in us and through us as we wrestle with you until we die. We want to wrestle until we die to ourselves so that we can become what it is that you purposed us to become. But we also, literally, God, want to wrestle until we die. We want to fight the good fight of faith. We want to keep the faith. We want to finish our course. And God, when we're done, then and only then are we done wrestling. So God, give us the strength. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable. Give us that power. Release it into our lives in a greater dimension. And help us, Lord God, to be at peace with your will for our lives. It's not our will, 
but it's your will be done. In Jesus' name. Will y'all do me a big favor? Right where you stand. In this pulpit a few months ago, Pastor Willie Powell, he stood and he gave his testimony about having fourth stage colon cancer, a hundred and something centimeters that went down to two. And it was in remission and they killed him. And he got healthy and he got strong. About three weeks ago, and I've been wrestling with this thing, it came back with a vengeance. And it's, 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 it's with a vengeance. And they sent him home, hospice, hospice care, pain management. Uh, he's just 40 something year old preacher. Stood right here preaching in the pulpit, traveled with me to Africa. I traveled back and forth to Orlando just to spend time with him. We gone to magic games together, making memories and cooking out at his house, him and my kids and everybody. And I, I, um, I'm going to see him tomorrow. And I tell you this, I want God to heal him. Come on, I said I want God to heal him. He had fourth stage colon cancer and they told him to get his house in order that he wouldn't live long. And that was well over a year ago. He believed the same God that stopped that then can stop it now. And I believe the same thing. So could you celebrate God with me in advance? Come on. Come on. This is for God to heal. Willie Powell, come on. This is for God to heal. Hallelujah. Come on. God heal Willie Powell. Yes. Come on, say it. God heal Willie Powell. God heal. Come on. God heal Willie Powell. Come on. God heal Willie Powell. Come on. Say it. God heal Willie Powell. God heal your man of God. God heal your apostle. God heal your pastor. Heal that husband. Heal that father. Move God. Move God. Heal God. Pray you were blessed by the worship experience here at the Potter's House. Make sure you share this word with a loved one on your timeline and newsfeed. And remember, there are ways that you can give. First, you can give by text by simply texting the word GIVE to 904-601-1695. Follow the prompts and you will receive a confirmation text of your gift. You may also give online at tphim.org backslash give. You can give through our Ministry One or Ezekiel Church app by downloading the app and following the instructions to give. Or you can mail in your gifts addressed to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida, 32205. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to the Potter's House. And for those of you who have answered the call to salvation, please call or text us at 855-TPH4JAX. That's 855-874-4529. And until the next time, remember to share this message and stay connected via Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TPHJAX. May God bless you and keep you until our next digital gathering.